Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video I'm going to cover Cascading Style Sheets, CSS, and how they work in Twine 2.0. So to start here we're looking at a story I've put together called Using CSS. And we see there's lots of colors. We've got a yellow and a blue, we've got white text, we've got sort of a purple link here, all very different things I'm going to go over. So I'm going to click the link to go to another passage, and we see even more colored text. We have a white text, and we have gold, and we have red, and we have gold, and then we have purple. All very different things you can do with CSS and use it in connection with different macros and elements within HTML. So let's go to the last link, and we see, let's see, what did the knight say? I've been moving through this story very quickly, so you may not have had a chance to read it. Well, we'll click on this, remember to bring our sword, and what else? In our mind. Oh no! Then we see a font change and then we see a text color change to end. Again, I've moved through this pretty quickly, but I want to show an example of how the CSS works before I go into how you set it up and how would you would use it in practice. So let's go back and look at the story. So as we can see the start passage, the edge of the forest, looks pretty simple. We've got text and we've got a link to another passage. Not much going on here. And a Knight's Tale, well, it gets a little bit more complicated. We've got some text, but we're also mixing in HTML elements here. The span tag. Now, an HTML, a span is just a length of text. Just some text here. And we're also using its class to assign it some CSS class. In this case, Knight class. Then we're using ID with the second span with Sarah ID. And then, at the end, doing it one more time and assigning class, night class. Now, what's going on right here, you may ask? Well, I'm using classes and I'm using IDs. In HTML, an ID needs to be unique to one element at a time. A class, however, can be assigned to multiple elements. So I've got two different spans, this first one and this third one each using the class, night class. In the middle, however, I've got a single span using the ID of Sarah ID. If you want to think about it in a way of giving a name to something, that is, you IDing it, giving it some type of identification, there needs to be only one unique instance of that. One thing has that ID. But multiple things can be in classes, like students can be in class, but a single student with the ID of Dan would be unique to that. Okay, so in the final link here we have a passage, Sarah checks her gear. So let's go look at that. Oh, and we've got some complicated code here. Well to start, using pretty simple, we're setting using the assignment macro set to set the variable night speaking to the string. Remember to bring your sword. Then we're using a link all of this for when you click on what did the knight say to bring again you get span and then you get a variable set to some string that is then replaced when the passage is rendered with remember to bring your sword and then within the same link is now an additional link to set the span class to night class and and your mind and then again we're using two changer macros font and text color font to change the times the Roman but then the Sun started to set and change the text color to red Sarah was in danger well that's all well and good if you've seen changer macros before if you've seen assignment macros before this doesn't look that complicated what we're doing behind the scenes, however, is changing the CSS so that we have a yellow background and a blue passage background and, of course, white text. So how do we do that? Well, down here using the menu, I can edit different things. I can edit the JavaScript, the style sheet, change formats, rename, snap to grid, proof and copy, and then finally publish the file. To change the CSS, I want to look at the story style sheet. 
And as you can see, I've already changed it substantially here. So to start, let me describe a little bit what I'm doing. So an HTML document, if you're sort of not aware, is divided into two sections, sort of, a, a head and a body. A head describes the document. It may have metadata like its title or information about it or what format the text should be in. The body, however, contains the content. It's where all of the links go. It's where all of the paragraphs go. That's the body. So whatever styles we apply to the body are applied across the body to everything. They cascade down from the body to each element within that document. Unless, however, they are also overridden at some later point. For example, I'm starting with setting the body to the background color of yellow. However, in the TW passage, the twine passage, I'm setting the background color to blue. Now, as you notice when I ran the story, you saw the background of the story was the yellow, the body was, but the passage was blue. So, the background color style cascaded from the body down to the next element, the passage, where the style was then overwritten to background color blue. Also overwrote the color to white. Since the background color is blue, the black text was kind of hard to read, so I went ahead and set the color to white. So we have white text, white color, on a background color of blue for the TW passage. Now the TW sidebar is the undo redo sidebar. Once you leave the first starting passage, you can go back or you can undo or you can redo using the sidebar and the arrows. However, in this case, I've set the display to none so it doesn't display that specific element. We don't see it. Display is none. For TW link, a twine link, you can set the color, the style, to something else. In this case, instead of using a named color like white or blue or yellow, I'm using its hexadecimal representation. In this case, it's six characters. Two C's, two zeros, two F's. If you're not familiar with hexadecimal representation, it's a way to represent a large number using its 16-bit system. If that sounds a little bit complicated and you don't want to have to worry about it, that's fine too. One way you can look up these colors without having to memorize these codes is a Google Web Safe Colors then look at the color you want and then copy and paste the hexadecimal representation along with the pound sign to start and it will be that color. Now the two last things I'm doing within the style sheet is a class and an ID. So as I talked about before classes can be used multiple times on a page and within a document they can be used for multiple elements. An ID like I said before needs to be unique to only one element However, because of the way Twine loads passages, it loads them one at a time. We don't ever see two passages rendered at the same time. So that does mean you can use an ID across passages, but you shouldn't try to use it twice or more times within the same passage. Now, you're not going to break the system if you do this. However, within CSS and HTML, it's just a general rule you should try to follow, that IDs are unique to one thing and classes can be for multiple elements. So as you see here, the night class, as classes start with a period, has the color of gold. So at its text will appear gold. IDs start with the pound sign and its color is red. So whenever I used the night class, the text color was gold. Whenever I used the Sarah ID, the text color was red. So running it again, you can see all the different colors in play. The background of the document is yellow. 
The background color of the passage, however, is blue. It also has white text. TW link is set to purple, that hexadecimal number. And then I'm using, again, we have a yellow body background color. We have white text. Then in this span, we have gold. But in this span, Sarah ID, it's red. And then again, in this last span, it's gold again. And then finally, we have another link. What did the knight say to bring? Again, gold. What else? In your mind. And then again, if we don't want to use change to CSS on large scale things, we can always use changer macros to change the font and change the text color. And one last note here is to remember that variables like this one that start with the dollar sign will not be rendered to the value within elements within the less than or greater than signs that describe some element. For example, I can use this night speaking variable and it will be rendered to the value remember to bring your sword on runtime. However, if I used it within the class or anywhere between this less than or greater than sign or this one, it would not be rendered correctly. So just something to keep in mind. That variables can exist within elements, but it can't be within the description of the element. Just a little something to keep in mind. And of course, again, we can use links to, when they're clicked, replace content with various things, and use changer macros if we don't want to change CSS, or use HTML, just as if this was any other HTML document, to include spans, paragraphs, divisions, whatever else we may need to dress it up as if it was an HTML document, which of course it is. Well, there you go, kind of an overview of using CSS in Twine 2.0. It's a lot of information, I know. But generally, Twine elements, that is, elements that are unique to Twine 2.0, start with TW, then a hyphen, like TW passage, TW sidebar, TW link. And other HTML elements, like body, of course, don't have a prefix. However, classes start with a period. It can be used on multiple elements. And IDs start with a pound sign and should generally only be used for one unique element. But again, because Twine loads passages one at a time, can be used across passages if you need to. Well, there you have it. An overview of using CSS and Twine 2.0. Thanks for watching.